All right, I'm going to do a OnePlus 7 Pro review. This is my new phone that I just got. Uh, I ordered it as soon as it came out, pretty much at 10 a.m. on the day it came out, which I don't remember exactly, but it was like a week ago Friday, so like nine days ago. Here it is, Tuesday the 28th of May. Now, um, my reviews tend to be really long and rambling, so I'm sure this one will be. In my defense, I don't use a script at all. So I just ramble on and hope I remember everything I wanted to touch on and all that business. <coughs> Another issue with this review is, I usually shoot my reviews if I'm not using the program I use to record my screen to do my content, uh, which I forgot the name of that right now. Fast screen recorder or something. Um, where was I? Oh yeah, uh, another issue is I recently got rid of all my other phones. I had a bunch of other devices and I gave them to some kids, basically my friend's kids. I had a Moto Z3 or Z2 Force, which is a Snapdragon 835 phone with a, with a, a AMOLED screen. Nice phone, I got it on a Slick Deals deal for like, uh, Slick Deals is a website. For like 150 bucks, great deal. I mean, that was after tax. It was actually like 129 bucks. But I ended up giving that away. Uh, of course, my old S8, I sold it to somebody for like 170 bucks. Online, they're selling for about 250. So, in order to avoid the hassle of selling a Swappa or something, which I've sold a lot of phones there before, but I would rather sell it to somebody I know for you know, and just get it out the way, even if it meant potentially losing as much as 80 dollars. Anyway, so I sold my old S8 Plus that was my phone for this. Uh, let me reiterate, I had a Samsung S8 Plus before this because I'll probably be referring back to that phone a lot. Anyways, I, I, I also gave away a little, or not a little, but an Amazon Fire HD 10 tablet, which actually I never did a review on, I probably should have. So long story short, I don't really have anything to shoot this video on. I sold all my other phones, but I do have one thing, which is what, the thing that I'm shooting this video on, which is the, I have an iPad. I haven't had it too long either, I'll probably do a review on it too. So I'm shooting this video on my iPad, it's the 9.7 whatever, because it's about the only camera I have left right now, <laughs> besides the phone itself. And also right now I have a kickstand case, I don't know what the brand is, I just got it off of Amazon for like 8 bucks. So it's easiest to me to hold this, it's kind of heavy to hold the iPad. So I think I may shoot much of this review like this, because it's just easy for me to, uh, to shoot the review this way without having to hold the heavy ass iPad up all the time. Uh, so about this phone, I don't know if you know the story or the specs, but it just came out. It's called the OnePlus 7 Pro. It's an amazing phone. The specs are just amazing. It has a 6.67 inch OLED 1440p screen. It has the latest CPU, which is a Snapdragon 855. It comes in several different RAM configurations, but the one I got is 12 gigabytes RAM and 256 gigabytes storage, which costs $750. <coughs> it has a triple rear camera setup if you care about that stuff. It has a 4,000 milliamp hour battery, all that stuff. <coughs> it has a nice OLED screen. Um, a few of the really nice standout features on this that you can't get on a Samsung at any price is it has um, UFS 3.0 storage, which is like the fastest storage available right now. Faster than any of the Samsung Galaxies. They use, I think, UFS 2.1. Um, so you can't get that on any Samsung at any price. I and mean, the Galaxy 10 just does not have that, period. Turn it a little so you can see it better, maybe. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Hold on, let me click. The, also, on this iPad, it's weird, but the... It's a very like wide angle lens, so gosh dang it. So that uh <laughs> it's kinda difficult to shoot this uh review. I'll put this back while I talk about it. Um gosh dang it. Freaking kickstand will not. By the way, this case, I don't even know the brand or anything of it. I just got it off of Amazon for like eight dollars. I have Prime now, so I get free shipping. Um it's kind of temporary, I'm probably going to get a speaking case after a bit. 
and it comes with a clear gel case, but it, that one doesn't look like it provides much protection. It's something, and so it's a good thing to know that it comes with so that you can use it for a few days when you look for a better case or whatever, provided you're very careful not to drop it, because I don't think the gel case will provide much protection if it drops. This case might not provide too much protection if it drops either, but it should be better than that gel case. Like I said, I'm kind of just waiting for, I think, the speeding to come out, which I think it comes out like June 1st or something. Or just something a little better, I don't know. But I do like kickstand cases, always have. Although this kickstand does not seem to, it's not really high enough. Like this is the highest thing I can get on it. I don't know if that would really be good for watching a movie or anything. It would be helpful though. But yeah, reasons I got this phone. Well, I looked at the Galaxy S10. I mean, I really didn't need a phone. My S8 Plus had stood me well and it's still a good phone. <clears throat> and I hadn't cracked it or anything. But, um, this Galaxy S10 came out, and I briefly considered buying one of those, but it just didn't hit me enough. And I saw one in the store, and I put my S8 next to it, and honestly, it didn't look that much better than the S8, you know? It really didn't. Somebody laughed at me when I told them that, like, yeah, you're just justifying the fact you're not going to buy an S10, because it's too expensive or whatever. <laughs> you know, that's what they were thinking <laughs> when they laughed at me. But no, it was honestly true. It, it just did not impress me that much over my S8 Plus, you know? It, it, the screen on my S8 Plus was great, you know, everything. <laughs> so yeah, I wanted an S10, but the pricing on those was also really high. The S10 Plus, I, I like big screen phones. I want big monster screen phones. Bigger the better. I mean, I'm sure that has to come to an end at some point, but generally speaking, and the, so the only S10 I would really have been in, and I had a, already a 6.2 on my S8 Plus, so I needed to go at least as big or bigger, or I would have felt my, like my next phone was a downgrade. So that meant the only one I could get would be the S10 Plus, which is a 6.4 inch screen. And it was a thousand bucks. And so, you know, I just could not, I mean, I couldn't even probably justify any of them, but especially not that much. So I didn't get that. And I kind of was waiting and waiting, and when this, I was kind of like, hmm, I wonder, I, I was kind of miffed about, dang, I would like to get an S10, maybe I'll wait for it on sale, whatever. That's what I typically do, I typically get my Samsung flagships like a year later or something, and I get them for like $400-ish, on a super good deal on that same website. Like my S8 Plus, I believe I got it in June of last year, and I had it for like about 10 months till May of this year, 11 months, I guess. But I had got it, what, I don't know how many months late that was. I guess about a year after it came out, the S8 Plus. But um, and I, got, I paid for something for it. And it came with some really awesome uh, Bluetooth uh, headphones that I never used. But they're supposedly worth like 100 bucks or something. You know, I, I got a great, great deal on it. But anyways, back to this phone. So I've never had a OnePlus phone before. I've always had Samsung flagships. And going back to the S1, you know, the original Galaxy S. And I gotta say, I was a little, you know, a little wary of like, is OnePlus really gonna be the quality I need? And I've had no issues with it, you know, it might as well be a Samsung, really. I haven't had any problems with the software or quality control yet, anyway. And like I said, I've had this phone for what, like 10 days, something like that. I've had it for a pretty good amount of time, you know. And been using it as my quote unquote the dreaded phrase daily driver. By the way, I set the screen time back to 30 minutes, which Samsung and phones I don't even think have 30 minutes. The maximum time I was 10 minutes. But since I knew I was gonna be filming this review, I set the display to not turn off at all basically as long as I could. So I set the screen time to 30 minutes and it's um so that's why it's not turning the screen's not dimming by the way. Um so this is an OLED panel it's 1440p rather than 1080p and uh, what are my thoughts on the phone? I got the, like I said, I got the 12 gigabyte version, which is awesome. And my thinking on that was the way OnePlus does it is their pricing is not much different. The six gigabyte and 128 storage version is 669. The eight gigabyte and 256 storage version, I think it is, is 699, which honestly might be the sweet spot. And then the 12 gigabyte, 256 gigabyte storage version is 6, 749. So I'm figuring for like, if I'm already spending close to $700, why not spend just a little more? Like if you think about it in percentages, 
This between set like I probably would have got the seven hundred version. This between like seven hundred and seven fifty, less than ten percent. Obviously, seven is ten percent of seven hundred. So why not spend less than ten percent more when you're already spending a large amount? You know, it's that way with large purchases. <laughs> Seventy bucks might sound like a lot, but when you're talking about you're already spending seven hundred, you might as well throw a little more on top. So I'm like, uh, this is probably, I'm thinking this may be the only time I buy it. This is the first time I've ever bought a flagship like right when it came out. I've kind of always wanted to. I always buy them, like I said, a year late on sale, that kind of thing. This is the first time, like pretty much day one, I was there. So I got the newest and greatest and coolest. Now I know that's not going to last very long. And something newer and greater and cooler is going to come along. And, you know, and in six months, it's going to be an old quote unquote phone. I get that. But it, it was neat to at least for once in my life. For a few days, have the latest and greatest, you know, a phone that's arguably unmatched anywhere in specs and things. And uh, I also, um, I wanted to talk about a bit about reviewers. And I feel like this phone has been getting a really unfair shake from a lot of reviewers. And some of them have just been inaccurate, malicious, or obnoxious, annoying. I have a lot of problems with phone reviewers, period. Uh, some of the biggest things that really annoyed me about this is this phone, in case you don't know, it doesn't have wireless charging. Honestly, who gives a shit, you know? Who gives a shit? Now, uh, I had wireless charging on my S8, and I did, you know, I started looking into it. It did annoy me hooking the wire up every night. So I got bought a little cheap pad for $10 or something off of Amazon, and I was using it, and I had been using that for like the past few months on my S8 Plus. And I did like it, the wireless charging. It is a little easier to throw your phone on a pad than to throw it on a wire. You know, put a wire, actually, you know, take the effort, oh, the rough effort, boy, to plug a wire in. So, I did use wireless charging and I did like it. But, so many of these reviews bash this phone and they don't have anything substantial. They just don't want to like it because they're just biased against it for some reason. And so they, they, they don't know what to do. So they just, you know, like... It seems like the main centerpiece of every review that, that doesn't like this phone. Oh man, it doesn't have wireless charging. Like, are you serious, you know? Phone reviews get on my nerves with crap like that. Like, are you serious? You know, plugging in a wire versus sitting in a cradle, is that big of a deal to you? Get off the internet, you know? Get, stop reviewing phones and leave. Like, that makes me so angry. Like, are you serious with that? <laughs> Mr. Mobile Michael Fisher is one of the ones that really annoys me, but yeah, he's, he's, he's never liked OnePlus phones. You know, he, he, he's always making snobby references to the never settle slogan about how, oh, well, really, all you're doing with the OnePlus is set me. <laughs> you know, he's a, I mean, he's okay, but and I guess he's entitled to his opinions, but he's so elitist, you know. And if it doesn't have the best of everything, he don't want it. And uh, he gave this phone a bad review, basically. And he really annoyed me. But his, his basic thing was, oh, it doesn't have wireless charging. You know, like, get the fuck out, dude. You know, stop reviewing cameras. Quit the internet. Seriously, like, that annoys me. Oh, okay, this phone. It really annoys me when, when people don't have anything bad about this phone. And most of the negative reviews, they're just basically front and center. Oh, it doesn't have wireless charging. So what? You know, so what? Believe me. It is not a big deal to plug a little wire in. I've been, now I don't have my S8 plus I have this. I've been plugging the wire in and I, oh, the horror. You know, the horror. I promise it's not a big deal. <laughs> uh, the other thing is, um, the other features, so it doesn't have an official water resistant rating. There's plenty of videos about that. <laughs> but it does have water resistance. There's videos where people dunk it under water with a timer running on it for 30 minutes at a time, and it's fine. You know, I wouldn't go crazy with it, but I wouldn't trust it because it doesn't have official IP rating. Another, there's a channel called Jerry Rig Everything, very popular, and he tears down phones and looks at the insides and beats them up and everything. And he tore it down and, sh and showed that it has gaskets on every opening, you know, so in theory it is waterproof. Now, like I said, it doesn't have the official certification because they said they don't want to pay for it. So I wouldn't trust it too much, but I also wouldn't worry about it. It's also not a big deal, you know. If I get it wet, I'm not going to worry about it because I know it has some level of water resistance, whether it's official or not. 
And the thing a lot of people pointed out is that even um, Samsung and all these phones with official IP ratings are not warrantied against water damage. So what, what, what good does that mean, you know? If you get water damage on your Samsung, uh, you're out of luck, you know? So all these reviewers that worry about the IP rating, I mean, who cares? Another thing I think it's dinged for is not having a headphone jack. You know, all these reviewers don't mind it on all these other phones, but you know, now that Samsung's latest has it and this doesn't, they also want to make a big deal out of it. I don't care. I don't care. You know, I had an S8, it had a headphone jack. Not only that, but it had a headphone jack at the top, which I think the S10 has one on the bottom. Top is much more convenient because you can listen to your pocket thing. But the point is, I never use my headphone jack, you know, in like the past five years of running the Samsung flagships, I've probably used my headphone jack twice, you know, I just don't use it, so who cares, who cares, now also, I believe this has a, you can get a USB-C to headphone adapter with this, I'm not sure if you have to have a certain type, but I've been reading, I read something to the effect it's a passive DAC, DAC, digital analog converter, whatever business. So I think any cheapo converter off of Amazon will work. It's the net point of that, I believe. Now, it's on the bottom. The USB-C port's on the bottom, so to me, that's less convenient. I, know, I guess you can just turn your phone over now to think about it in your pocket. But, uh, but yeah, personally, oh, and also I, I have a pair of wireless earbuds that I bought before I got this phone. Because they were $17 on Amazon. They have the stupid wire behind the neck. I don't love that. It's a real thin wire, but it's one of those versions. I don't love that. They're not the truly wireless ones like I believe the Apple AirPods are. But they're wireless, you know, and they're Bluetooth. And uh, they were $17 freaking dollars on Amazon, you know. This one is like $300 less than the comparable Samsung. You know, you can spare 17 bucks, or if you don't want the wireless ones, get even the converter, which is probably like 7 bucks or something, you know. Come on, dudes, with this crap, these reviewers, they get on my nerves. The thing about reviewers, they don't talk about what's important. What's important is the display. That's how you interact with your phone every second of every day. That's the A number one thing you need to worry about, reviewers. Not anything else, the display. And this has the best class leading display, you know, it has 6.67 inch screen, it's, it's, you know, it's just fantastic, it's just beautiful, I'm going to pick it up, you know, with the OLEDs and the, the screen scoring on this is so fast, maybe I'll go ahead and, it's hard to get a good shot here, I have to hold the iPad so high to focus, uh, the scrolling is so smooth with this guy, I mean, it's so fast. 12 gigabytes RAM. It's so nice. So pretty. The screen is beautiful. Like, this this video is not even going to come close to doing how beautiful the screen is, Justice. I promise you that. There's the triple camera setup. If you give a crap about that, go back to sitting it like this. So, oh, whoops. I always forget not to put my hand over the damn camera. See, it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful display, silky smooth. The brightness is great. Um, I've heard some people saying it's not as bright as the Samsung S10 in reviewers. Well, first of all, they always make that determination based on playing a YouTube HDR video. Because they, they always do the comparison of like the S10 and maybe the iPhone and this. And this one looks a little more darker. But they're playing a YouTube HDR video every single time. I believe there may be issues between YouTube HDR and this phone. So I read some comment to that effect. I don't have any details on that. Or, but I, So I would like to see them, uh, you know, uh, use net, try to use Netflix or something like that. See if the results are any different. Because I think there is a problem with YouTube and HDR on this phone. Uh, you know, like YouTube doesn't officially support it yet or something like that. Um, I don't know, if you have the phone in your hands, the screen is just gorgeous, you know. I don't care what anybody says, it's unbelievably pretty. YouTube looks just fucking fantastic on it. You know, everything looks fucking fantastic on it. Um, as far as it not getting bright, uh, also technically it does, because there's only one site I know of that did uh, brightness testing. And uh, they they wrote it they rated it at uh, I have it right in front of me on my computer. 
They rated the manual brightness at 436 nits of the OP7 Pro, whereas the manual brightness of the S10 Plus is 385 nits. In other words, when you just manual, the OnePlus 7 Pro is brighter than the S10. Now, there is a catch. The S10 also has a max auto feature. They all have. You can turn on my auto brightness and they'll get brighter than the manual brightness will allow you to set. Because if you're out in the sun, you put the auto brightness on, it'll get super, super bright so that you can see in the sun. But normally they don't want you to be able to turn it up that high so you won't, I guess, run the battery down or, or hurt your eyes or I don't know what. So the, but the S10 Plus in Max Auto gets up to 793 nits, according to the GSM Rainer's review. Whereas the OP7 Pro only, I'm going to put that in quotation marks, gets to 616 nits. Which is very close to like the iPhone XS Max, which gets 653 nits, and the iPhone XS, which gets to 660 nits. And nobody's going around saying, oh, the iPhone XS is not a very bright phone, or you know what I mean? So it's kind of, you know, I'll put it this way. And that's, again, that's with auto max brightness, which I personally never use auto brightness on my phones. I hate it. It always makes it too dim for me in normal lighting conditions. The only time it's useful is if you're in the sun, which is like once in a blue moon. And then it can give you a little extra kick of brightness that manual mode can't give you. But like I said, that's like never. <laughs> And if it is, you know, even then, I suspect that manual brightness would be bright enough on this phone. Um, so, yeah, but but in person, it's bright. You know, this display is so bright. I have it on, like, 50% brightness, and it's so bright. You know, it's just like my S8. I had that always set on about 50% brightness. And it's as bright or brighter than the S8 Plus easily, and they're both in the same brightness spec. Beautiful, beautiful phone. Can't, can't you know, praise it enough. Now, oh, there is one other bugaboo, which is the camera on this is supposedly not the best. It's supposedly improved over the past phones, but not great. Not as good, theoretically, as like the S10. But I honestly think it's overrated. I think smartphone cameras in general are overrated. Uh, you know, if you want a camera, buy a camera. You know, if, if smartphone cameras were so important, then the Google Pixel 3 would have been the best selling smartphone of all time. Because everybody agrees it had the best camera. Guess what? Google just came out a few months ago, or you know, a, wait, a few weeks ago, and they said, "Oh, the Pixel line's not selling very well, so we're making the Pixel 3a and you know, the lower price." They said it didn't sell very well. It has the best camera in the world, everyone agrees. So what does it tell you? It tells you consumers do not care that much about the camera. And for me, it's not even that they don't care that much. It's that to me, all smartphone pictures, like if you took this phone and took some pictures with it, you took an S9 and took pictures with it, you took an iPhone and took pictures with it. I guarantee no one could really tell the difference, no matter what they say, you know? Now, granted, nice camera's better. Here's another thing. They always say, like, oh, the camera's good, but in low light, it's not that good. And I'm thinking, like, people, stop taking pictures in the dark anymore. <laughs> you know, who does that? Well, what is with these phone reviewers? They're going around taking pictures in the dark. Don't take fucking pictures in the dark, people. You know, what is wrong with you? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Stop going around in dark rooms taking pictures, you freaks. <laughs> you know, who does that? Anyway, that's my other little mini rant. You know, they always get their, oh, the low light performance. Okay, don't take pictures in the dark. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, what I've seen, I don't even know about the camera, because I've seen any mixed results. Like, some pictures it looks better than the S10. Some it looks worse. I, I don't know. I, I'd say if, if you care about the camera, it's probably worse. I don't much, you know, as long as it's serviceable. And I think it's definitely serviceable. I don't use it a lot, you know, the camera. Uh, it's great to have 256 gigabyte storage, I'll say that. Um, after I loaded everything up and everything, uh, I still have like 211 gigabytes free, you know. It's nice. It's very, very nice. And I remember it's kind of amazing to me that I have 256. Let me try a different thing. I'm going to go ahead and put it, lean the phone on my computer monitor, and then I'll. There, you can get a little different look at it. Oh, that's kind of drowned up on my computer monitor now. Uh, you can see the GSM or any testing that I mentioned back here, the white levels. You see the S10 Max Auto at the top, and the OnePlus 7 Pro's figures there. You can see it gets very bright, it's fine. Uh, what else? Yes, beautiful, gorgeous phone. Super fun. Oh, the, another reason I got the 12 gigabyte RAM is I, 
I kind of beat myself up as I always do over any large purchase over purchasing this. You know, I could use that money in wiser ways. I shouldn't have been irresponsible. You know, do I really need this phone? No, my S8 Plus was great and it was fine. All that, but uh, but one of the ways I kind of justified to myself is, well, I'm gonna keep this phone a long time. You know, now that I've spent this money. I'm gonna keep this phone hopefully like two years. Not like I said, I only had the S8 like 11 months. I fully plan to keep this two years or more, you know. So if I do that, especially everyone says, oh, 12 gigabyte RAM, oh, okay, you don't really need it. Well, what about in a year? You know, what about in two years? So I think it's good to have. A lot of people have said it's stupid, worthless. Sorry, I'm just wiping debris off my desk as I know we sit here. <laughs> uh, but I think they're stupid, you know. <laughs> I think it's a. Um, Uh, somebody replied to my YouTube comment it popped up. But anyways, uh, but yeah, it's, it's a beautiful phone. Can't recommend it enough. I think the best one will work. Right don't listen to the reviewers that telling you to get the Samsung or that you get, you know, heaven forbid, the Pixel. Uh, although, if you want the best camera, I guess get the Pixel. If that's important to you. It's not important to me. Important to me is the power, the display, the specs. And this has them. You know. Oh, I didn't even cover the stupid. Everybody else probably has. Oh, it has a pop up camera. You can see it. Well, let me get off here. Anyways, it has a pop up camera. Forget that. Every other video is covered. I don't know. Oh, shit. <laughs> it fell down. I don't even care. It's a pop up camera. Go watch another video if you want to see it. Uh, it's fine. One thing I don't like that I didn't know at first is that when you go into Snapchat, I never use the selfie cam, but if you go into Snapchat, uh, it, uh, it pops the camera up automatically because Snapchat automatically accesses your selfie cam, and there's no way around it. Like, if you deny Snapchat the permission to use your selfie cam, it won't let you enter Snapchat. If you're like me, you just browse Snapchat. You don't use it to, you know, actually use it. You just look at some hoes on there if you do my image. <laughs> More or less. Uh, girls. Okay, let's say some models on there, whatever, you know. I mean, actual models. I, I don't follow, like, adult models or something. Anyways. <laughs> uh, you know, I I don't really look at it or know any people on Snapchat. But, uh, yeah, I do have Snapchat. I noticed if you open Snapchat, it pops the camera. And that's a little annoying because I didn't plan to use the camera at all, but I do look at Snapchat three, four times a day. So I'm going to be actually popping the camera up a few times, but it's supposedly rated for 300,000 uses. And I'm sure I've never tested, you know. Um, so yeah, amazing phone. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Reception has been good. You see the battery life. It's pretty good. Um, I will say it, it does actually use the battery pretty fast. I think it's about equivalent to my S8 Plus. If not a little worse battery life possibly, believe it or not. Um, I do notice that it does, you know, chug through some battery. I think it's better than the S8 Plus, but it has a fast charging though. It's really great. You still have it for literally like 10 to 15 minutes and it charges like 30, 40%. It's incredible. So it's kind of like you may need to top it up. I don't. Because I, I always get, you know, plenty of battery. I mean, I always, it always has plenty of battery. But if you ever needed to top it up, you know, it tops up so fast. So, to kind of mitigate it with that. Um, I don't know. Uh, I'm kind of wary, like, what to pop up on my phone. This is not the real personal information. Like, I wanted to pop up the dialer. But then you'd see, like, personal numbers on there and stuff. So, <laughs> Because uh, I, I, I was going to mention, I don't like the dialer of all the stupid things. It's like this weird purple color, and it just seems old-fashioned to me. Same problem I have with Motorola dialer. Like, I get a Motorola phone, and I look at the dialer. This is going to be completely weird and, like, specific to a person. But the, the f dialer on the Motos is, like, uh, old-fashioned or something. I just don't like it. Same on this phone, really. It has a weird purple and, like, dated appearance to me. But that's just me, I guess. And obviously not a big deal. Don't know what to say except get this phone. You know, for the price, you're getting things that the top of the line Samsung doesn't have. The UFS 3.0, the 90 hertz refresh rate, 12 gigabytes of RAM. You know, this is a beast. 
I'm so happy with this phone. Um, there is one little tiny thing I would be like not being dishonest if I didn't mention real quick. Jerry rigged everything to tear down, like I had mentioned earlier, and in it he there was a standoff, and he said this standoff is made out of a brittle alloy. I know because the other teardown of it I did, I smashed it into a million pieces. So I'm thinking like, what? It's a, a, if you don't know, a standoff is kind of like a screw, but but it kind of separates something in the in the device. It's standoff, but it's like a screw at the bottom and another screw at the top, kind of. Um, so that kind of made me question the quality. Like, did they cheap out on the screws? You know. <clears throat> but uh, he meant just the standoff, not so. And but uh, you know, I, thought, and I was kind of thinking about like, what if you dropped this phone and like one of the standoffs inside shattered? As Jeremy said, he didn't give any detail or touch on it at all. You know, that would probably break the break it. You know, the phone wouldn't work right after that. But you know, the more I thought about it, the more I thought it's kind of like an OCD thing. Like, who knows uh, if that screw's really particularly brittle, or if it's any worse or any different than Samsung's, or you know, if it matters at all either way, and you know, so it's just something, you know, you know the phone feels really solid, the bend test I've seen it does really well, and like Jerry tried to bend it, and he can barely bend it at all, you know, so I'm not worried about it, it's, it's a great phone, fantastic, I got the blue ones, one thing I don't like, I guess, is that the only color you can get the, uh, 12 gigabyte mile in is the blue, and I prefer like a black or near gray, especially now that I've had the blue for a few days, you know, everybody raves about, oh, the blue is so pretty, it's okay, you know. I'd prefer the mirror gray and hit any basically black. Not a big deal though. So yes, I can't say it enough. Get this phone. I think it's the best phone in the world. It's better than the Pixel 3a. Don't let the reviewers lie to you. It's better than the S10. Don't let the reviewers lie to you. Another point about reviewers, I wanted to talk about one in particular, and I've seen a couple do this. But don't they, they? Even one of the biggest reviewers out there who I normally like, a Dave V, I think is his name. A real like soft spoken Asian guy. And like I said, I normally like his stuff, but he said a few dishonesties and a few reviews have mentioned this. They'll say that the oh the S ten plus came out at this price and this price. But you know, with Samsung the price falls and, and now it's like seven hundred they just lie because you cannot get the Samsung S ten unlocked. Like this phone is unlocked. No strings attached for seven fifty. You cannot get the S ten plus unlocked for seven fifty anywhere period you know even 850 even 950 you know what they're talking about is two things they're talking about and they mention it usually carrier deals like yes if you're on Verizon you can get the S10 plus for like 200 300 off now or the S10 or the S10e whatever or if you're on AT&T postpaid the problem is if you're on any of those networks you're overpaying anyway and they know that that's why they give you great discounts on phones I'm on Mint Mobile. I pay like 20 bucks a month for, you know, tons of, like, hotspot and everything else. You know? Get out of town with this rise of AT&T postpaid overpriced crap. So, yeah, if I want to pay way too much per month, I can get a $200 discount on my phone. That doesn't count, you know? I hate to tell you this. Uh, and, you, and you have to be on those carriers for, and you have to have paid service on those carriers for usually typically maybe six months. I'm not sure the exact sometimes a year before you can get the, them to unlock the phone for you because they know they subsidize it so yeah if you want to go to overpriced at and postpaid for a minimum of six months to get 200 bucks off your phone okay you know more power to you it's not the same thing Dave Lee and I mentioned him because he's the biggest one who, who did this nonsense you know, it's, the, un, compare apples to apples. Compare unlocked, no strings attached Galaxy phone to unlocked, no strings attached OnePlus phones. Because you get, I got this unlocked, no strings attached, seven hundred and fifty dollars. You know, you cannot get the S10 Plus anywhere for even eight fifty, even nine fifty that I know of, let alone seven fifty. So get out of town with that garbage. Um. The next thing is, uh, several of them will say, or, or you can get the international version on Amazon from this person, and then they'll link it. And a couple of reviews did this, I think Daily did it as well. First of all, they're making a commission off of every Amazon sale if they link it in the description. Okay, you should know that. They're getting paid to do that. So they're lying to you. They're, they're being disingenuous. 
second thing is, you know, they have a monetary interest in that. You can't, OnePlus 7 Pro, I don't believe, is even sold on Amazon. You buy it direct from our website. So they can't make money off of linking this guy. But the, here's the problem with buying the international version, which is as low as $750 for the SDN Plus, I believe, on Amazon. Two big problems. They're non-starters. One, they have no USA warranty. None. So, you know, something's wrong with it, whatever. You're out of luck, buddy. That right there makes it a non-starter. The second thing is they don't have the correct radios. They use the Samsung Exynos chip. So they don't have the bands that you need to get good LTE coverage here in the United States, you know. Like, for example, a big band that T-Mobile is moving to is Band 71. Actually, one of the main reasons I kind of wanted an updated phone was since I'm on Mint Mobile right now, I need T-Mobile stuff, and my S8 Plus did not have support for Band 71, which is a new low-frequency band T-Mobile's been rolling out. What does it all mean? You know, it means more coverage. It means more coverage in buildings. It means good stuff. International S8 Plus, or S10 Plus does not have that band supported. Because it's for Europe, you know, it's not a United States phone. That's the reason all you do the United States pack chips use Qualcomm chipsets. Qualcomm chipsets support all the frequencies here. It's the same with AT&T. There's certain bands that are new that have come online in the past couple of years. The international versions don't support them. You're not getting the coverage you could. Do not buy an international phone off of Amazon, you know. It'll work, but you're not getting the best coverage that you could, the best speeds that you can, you know, and it could depend on where you live, maybe you can get by with it someplace, but I wouldn't do it at any price, really, you know, unless I thoroughly researched what was going on with it. So yes, they'll link that $750 S10 Plus on Amazon and lie to you and say, oh, it's the Samsung S10 is now, Plus is now the same price as the One Plus 7 Pro. It ain't apples to apples, you know, do, do not buy those international versions that they're making money off of. So those are the two big caveats. No warranty, no correct LTE support, and band support. Um, and even at 750 I'd probably rather buy this. It's better. It has UFS 3.0. The Samsung does not have UFS 3.0. It has a 90 hertz display. The Samsung does not have a 90 hertz display. It has a 12 gigabyte and 256 storage option for 750 Samsung at seven, uh, at even 1,000 or the 750 versions touted by, by the Amazon versions don't I don't I think they're eight and one twenty eight maybe maybe even six and one twenty eight you know they're definitely not twelve and one twenty eight and twelve and two fifty six that's for damn sure you know uh, how about the fact that you have no punch hole you know it's not a big deal but like when I do see those S tens and I see the punch hole like people need to stop making excuses for that punch hole it's annoying you know it does kind of mess with your screen a little bit is the end of the world no. But is it better to not have it? Yes. Guess what doesn't have it? The S O P seven Pro. You know they make a big deal out of stupid wireless charging. Oh my God! I have to plug in a cord at the end of the day for one point two seconds out of my busy day. That's so much more important than having a damn hole in my screen when I look at it one thousand percent of the time for the rest of the time I'm on the phone. Oh wait, no, it isn't. It's actually way less important. Remember viewers, here's what matters about phones. The display, the display, the display, and in last place wireless charging, and in next to last place the camera. <laughs> the display and the power, the speed, those are what matter. Anything else? Quality, quality, quality has seemed fine, although I think there's a bug where Right now, you can't turn down the volume on the, somebody calling you's call as low as you should be able to. They're kind of like too loud all the time. But I'm sure it's something they're going to fix in firmware. And it's not the end of the world as it is. You know, it's usable. Um, I haven't had any quality issues. People made a big deal out of the slider on the side that uh, turns your phone to do not disturb and stuff. And I thought I would actually like that because I always put my phone on do not disturb at night. But I don't even use it, uh, you know, I just slide, uh, do use the notification shade to try and do not disturb just like I used to. Um, uh, you know, this phone's a beast. I feel like um, I like my phone to be able to replicate my desktop on the road. To do that, it needs a lot of power and a lot of speed, and this has that. And a huge screen, this has that. 
you know, the, the Samsung that has a 6.7 screen as big as this guy is the 5G model, and that's $1,400, you know, so get this instead. <laughs> so like I said, best phone in the world, don't let the reviews lie to you, fantastic phone. This review is now up to 40 minutes, so I guess I'm going to go ahead and cut it off, so have a good one.